Welcome to the first lesson of a series of uh, training videos which I am going to be uh, doing over time. Uh, this will be the first uh, item in, a, in the category of uh, power design as per DIWA standards. Uh, I will start with the basic stuff uh, for beginners and for uh, fresh graduates or for uh, uh, specialists who just uh, got into the field and are interested in learning uh, specific uh, details about the uh, power distribution system as per the uh, local UAE standards and uh, specifically DIWA. Uh, to be honest, I found uh, that there is a very uh, limited uh, number of resources when it comes to the standards, the local standards and uh, the available training for especially uh, electrical uh, power distribution. Uh, so uh, I decided to start this series in my channel and try to share uh, my experience uh, for the benefit of everyone so that uh, anyone who, who is interested in learning uh, about anything related to electrical engineering would benefit from this uh, series of uh, explanatory videos and uh, courses. Let me start with the first lesson. Electrical load schedule explained. In this video, I'm going to uh, explain the electrical load schedule give all the details and what does it consist of, what does it represent and finally I will give an example of how the load schedule relates to the DB, the actual DB, the actual electrical panel. So uh, the load schedule is basically a tabular summary showing all the details of an electrical panel and overall it can represent the power distribution in all the uh, project uh, so uh, basically you will have a, a load schedule for each and every electrical panel in a certain project you will have a load schedule for the uh, summary load summary of the complete project you will have a load schedule for the main low voltage panel the lv panel you will have another sheet for the smdbs then you will have finally a sheet for the final distribution boards which serve the final lighting and power circuits uh, so what is a load schedule the load schedule is showing all the details of a certain electrical panels so each sheet will be applicable for one electrical panel it may consist of one sheet or more sheets depending on the electrical panel size and the number of circuits so as you can see here i i, I have broken it down into certain parts to highlight the main uh, components of a load schedule. What does it consist of? So as you see here in the red area, this is the title area showing the details of what is the panel name here. So you, you would enter the panel name. In this case, it's a one bedroom load schedule, DB one bedroom. The project name would be there as well, as you can see here. Is it a three phase or single phase? Because you would have a single phase DB and a three phase DB. In this case, it's a three phase, which is the most commonly used uh, type, unless there is a uh, small load, which is served by a single phase DB. In that case, you will have a single phase DB. Fed from where? So this panel, which this load schedule represents, from where it is fed? What is the upstream panel? We will be talking about this later in future lessons. Uh, so this is a basic overall introduction where we will explain the load schedule for beginners. Then we will go in details in the coming lessons for explaining how to make a load schedule, how to design a load schedule uh, for a DB, for an SMDB, how to uh, decide the loads to be entered 
how to estimate the electrical load, how to decide the cable size, everything will be detailed in future separate videos. So if you are interested in learning more, uh, please register to my channel and uh, activate the bell uh, sign so that uh, you might be notified of my future uh, videos. So let me continue. Uh, here you have the title of all the items in a certain load schedule here. You have the rating of income or rating of ELCB, circuit number, MCB rating, circuit wire size, the earth continuity size, the area where this circuit serves, the connected loads, and the phase load distribution for each phase, and the remarks section. So this is basically the header of the load schedule, showing the titles of each area. Next thing. Next component of a load schedule is the main isolator rating, main in-camera isolator rating. So for every panel, for every electrical panel, in this case we are in a final distribution board load schedule. So this is the isolator section. What is the isolator rating for this in-camera DV? This is showing 32 ampere three-phase isolator. So this DB has a 32 ampere three phase isolator, TP isolator. Next section, as you can, as highlighted in red, is the rating of the ELCBs and how many ELCBs we have. So a load schedule, a final DB load schedule, or in general, a load schedule will show you the number of ELCBs. The ELCBs represent the number of sections in a certain DB. So this DB, an ELCB is by the way an earth leakage circuit breaker. I will be talking in detail also about this one in coming videos, about the types of breakers that we have, ELCB, MCB, MCCB. So an ELCB here, one, two, three, four. So you can say for this DB, I have four section ELCB. It's a four section DB consisting of four ELCBs. Each ELCB serves a certain number of MCBs, downstream MCBs. So the way that it goes, please follow my cursor, that the in-camera cable is connected to the isolator. The isolator is feeding downstream of one, two, three, four ELCBs. These ELCBs are connected to downstream MCBs, miniature circuit breakers. MCB is shortcut for miniature circuit breakers. So this ELCB connects to one, two, three MCBs. ELCB two, basically section two, connects to one, two, three, four, five, six, MCBs. ELCB3 connects to 1, 2, 3 MCBs. And the same applies for ELCB4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a four section DB consisting of four ELCBs. In the ELCB rating here, what can you see? You can see I have three variables. I have a variable in ampere showing the ampere rating of the ELCB. Then I have in milliamps ELCB, and finally I have the number of poles in an ELCB. Let me start with the simplest one. So since this is a, a three phase DB, naturally I will have a four pore ELCB where I have the red, yellow, and the blue, phase one, phase two, and phase three, and I have the neutral connected to this ELCB. So it's a four pole. Then I have the, the rating, the protective rating of this ELCB, the leakage at which this ELCB will trip. So in this case, uh, of course, as I said, I will be detailing more about the ELCBs, but here I'm just representing the overall uh, uh, components of the load schedule. So an ELCB now, this one is rated at 100 milliamps. So this ELCB, is rated for tripping at 100 milliamps. So when there is a leakage, a current leakage of 100 milliamps, this ELCB will trip to protect the 
either the downstream circuits, the loads connected to that ELCB, or to protect the personnel or the, uh, any person who is uh, who might have gotten in contact with this uh, circuit or with a certain live wire. Uh, so it's 100 milliamp ELCB. Then I have the rating, the maximum current that can flow through this ELCB to serve the downstream MCBs is rated in current. So this e so I, I will sum it up. This ELCB is a four-pore ELCB where I have the three-phase and neutral connected to the CLCB. In the case of single-phase DB, I will have a two-pole ELCB where I have the single phase and the neutral connected to this ELCB. So either I have a four-pole or two-pole. Then I have the 100 milliamp protective rating, the leakage rating can be 10, can be 30 milliamps, it can be 100 milliamps, can be 300, 500 milliamps, depending on the type of load and the uh, nature of the load. We will be detailing this in the future. And I have finally the amp rating of the CLCB, which represents the maximum current that can flow naturally through this ELCB without causing it to trip. So this is an overload protective function that functions as a normal breaker in case I exceed the maximum current. So all these downstream breakers, the maximum current that can flow through this ELCB, so this is since like a tap, if you imagine it like a water flow, it's a tap that passes maximum 40 amps in the normal operating conditions for all the downstream circuits. So in case a certain uh, overload happens, more than 40 amp, this ELCB will trip. In case a uh, current leakage uh, has taken place due to any fault or any other reason, as we said, this ELCB will trip if that leakage exceeds 100 milliamps. Uh, here is another example of an ELCB, which is uh, 30 milliamps. So this is 100 milli 40 amp, 40 amp, 40 amp, 40 amp. You will see that typically most ELCBs are rated for 40 amps in the DIWA, uh, usually in DIWA projects for the final DBs. But the difference will be in the ELCB rating. So I will have typically a four pole, a 40 amp. This almost standard in most cases. Then you will mainly differentiate the ELCBs by the milliamp rating. So this is 100, this is the 30. Okay, so this is a 30 milliamp serving the power circuits. Power circuits will have 30 milliamps and lighting circuit will have 100 milliamp. Next thing is the phase colors of each circuit, the circuit number and the phase color of that circuit. So here, as we said, I have a three-phase DB. So I have R, Y, B. These R, Y, B, the loads are distributed equally to balance the loads on each phase. So I have phase R, phase Y, phase B. So I'm numbering them according to the number of circuits. So R, Y, B1, R1, Y1, B1, then R, Y, B2, R, Y, B3, R, Y, B4, etc. Until you list all your loads and you ensure that your loads are distributed evenly on them so in this case this is circuit number one r1 this circuit is red color one and these are the load details and the downstream load details so these are all the phase references of a certain circuit this will be physically in a certain panel you would tag this circuit with a r1 the, the wire color will be red and the tag number will be uh, will have a sequential number of one next uh, component of a load schedule a final db load schedule is the mcb rating miniature circuit breaker rating as you can see here as highlighted in red color this represents the rating of that final circuit breaker which will protect the downstream the final circuit be it a lighting circuit being a power circuit be it a cooker circuit a washing machine circuit so this is the mcb rating protecting that uh, that circuit 
I will have in this case of course I have a three phase DB but the downstream the final circuit breakers the MCBs can serve single phase loads or three phase loads so I have a, a three phase DB I might have a single phase cooker where I will connect for example uh, 32 amp such as in this case you can see it's a cooker unit of 32 amp I might have a three phase cooker where I will connect a 32 amp then it will occupy a full space of RYB I will show you another examples in other cases so uh, these MCBs are the final circuit uh, protecting uh, component uh, and you will have typically uh, lighting circuits would have uh, 10 amps or 16 amps depending on the application depending on the project specs depending on the uh, load that you are connecting to this one so but usually you would decide in a certain project whether you want to use 10 amps or 16 amps for the lighting circuits uh, power circuits are usually uh, 20 amps as per the standard you would use a 20 amp breaker for connecting uh, power sockets up to five sockets so you would use a 20 amp to connect downstream sockets up to five sockets a maximum of 1000 watts because you would use you would assume 200 watt load per socket so that will be maximum five sockets for 20 amp breaker connection if it exceeds five sockets you would use 32 amp mcb and up to a maximum of 10 sockets so again the uh, mcb rating for power circuits is 20 amp connecting maximum of five sockets we would call this circuit a radial you would assume 200 watt per socket so you would have a maximum of 1000 watts connected to this circuit then in case I have more than five sockets and I want to connect them to the same phase I would use a 32 amp breaker again we are assuming 200 watts per socket so up to a maximum of 10 sockets which would equal how much it would equal 2 kilowatts or 2000 watts and that would be the maximum a 32 amp is permitted to handle as per DUA standards as per the local DUA standards so this is mainly for the power section uh, the lighting section uh, you would usually uh, connect a maximum of 1200 watts in the earlier days uh, these lights uh, we were assuming 100 watts for each light point so you would connect a maximum of 12 points for each lighting circuit but currently technology has developed and the majority of the light fittings nowadays since we have uh, uh, green uh, uh, regulations in place and uh, we are trying to implement uh, environmental friendly practices uh, most lights are LED which is rated at 10 watts 12 watts 15 watts 20 watts so you typically connect much more than 12 watts uh, and the final load will not reach to 1200 watts so as you see in this example the load is 168 uh, for this circuit so the maximum permitted you have some freedom in the lighting circuits in case you are using led lights you can connect up to 1200 watts but you would usually want to balance the load and connect much less than that uh, ensuring that the loads are finally balanced okay so as you see here the examples of the loads here uh, i have uh, uh, sockets normal sockets here are the number of sockets and this is the load shown there i have a water heater it's taking 20 amp i have a dishwasher 20 amps again 20 amp is the typical rating for most power circuits i have a 20 amp washing machine i have a 12 view cabinet 12 20 amp cooker circuit you see it's 3000 watt therefore this one must have a higher breaker rating which is 32 amp then i have the table lamp of 10 amps and finally the fcu where we connect 20 amps for each fcu machine so I will move to the next component in a load schedule here, which is the 
circuit wire size so we started with the isolator rating for this panel here downstream it's feeding how many sections how many elcbs these elcbs are connecting downstream how many phases how many mcbs each line represents a circuit and an mcb then the wires that are connected to this mcb so now i have in this case in the lighting circuits 10 mcb then it's connected to 2.5 circuit this is the main uh, circuit wire size and this is the protective conductor wire size this is the ecc protective conductor wire size so this is the wires connected to these circuits for 10 amps for lighting circuits as per the again the local DWA standards which we will be following here uh, are 2.5 for the protective conductor and for the earth continuity conductor so whether it's 10 amps or 16 amps you would use a 2.5 mm circuit wire size and the ECC also will be 2.5 for power circuits you would use a 20 amp <coughs> sorry you would use a 20 amp breaker and the 4 mm uh, wire single core wires then in most cases you would use 4 mm earth productivity conductor but in some exceptional cases it might be accepted to use 2.5 we have gotten approval in several cases for 2.5 mm ecc wire size for the 4 mm but again this is let's say not a standard practice don't take it as a rule always use 4 mm for the ecc wire size up to 16 mm so up to 16 mm wire size i would use the same ecc conductor size this is the standard practice and this is the dewa standard and this is the bs standard and that will be that will keep you on the safe side uh, so a, a, a typical power circuit 20 amp would have 4 mm wire for the phase circuit and 4 mm wire for the ECC circuit then in case I have a ring circuit as we mentioned which is 32 amp breaker that would have again 4 mm wire that would be the only exception for the 4 mm wire so if i have a ring circuit feeding from 6 to 10 sockets i would put a 32 amp breaker and 4 mm wire that is as per the standards because the current will be shared across the wire which is returning back to the breaker it's a ring so the current will be divided so in that sense the 32 amp will will be sufficient it's not a radial this is a radial circuit the wire is not returning back to the breaker but a 32 amp wire is connected to the last point and returning back to the breaker so the 32 amp will typically take 6 mm 32 amp breaker will take 6 mm if you are interested in having a separate lesson about this one please let me know in the comments section so that we might uh, discuss this in detail breaker sizes against wire sizes uh, 10 mm as we said is a 2.5 again here uh, 20 is 4 mm let's move to the next section next section is the circuit label so this line again all these properties when you follow a line from here you would all these items apply to this circuit which is starting from here circuit number two phase color y1 wire uh, mcb 10, 10 ampere circuit wire size 2.5 ecc 2.5 then here is the area where this circuit is serving so in this case i have a bedroom plus bath next one this light circuit is serving the kitchen this power circuit is serving the living dining area so as you can see this is the area where the circuit is serving next part in a load schedule is the details of the number of points that are connected to this circuit so as you can see here it's divided i have a lighting chandelier coal bill for example exhaust hood and 13 amps switch outlet water heater etc 
and I have an FCU as well. So what I would do is that I will check my layout. We will have again if you are interested I will uh, give one example this is just the beginning the introduction to understand the load schedule so in the coming lessons as I said we will be uh, understanding how to implement all these details in a new layout or a new project how to make the load schedule based on a layout and how to balance the loads but now it's enough just to understand the main items and what does this consist of so that when we come to the next stage of designing a load schedule or implementing it based on a layout, you would know what each item represents and how to reflect it here based on the layout. And finally, I will give a brief of what does actually this load schedule represent in real life, how this one reflects in the panel, how, how this one will be used to make a panel. So uh, as you can see here, you list a number of points. I will just give one example from lighting, one example from power. So this lighting here, this lighting circuit has four slash two slash one. So it's three different types of lights. And here you would list the loads in the same sequence that you have mentioned here. So for example, four slash two slash one. And here is one. Here is one. Here, this 9 slash 14 slash 18 slash 36. This 9 is 9 watts, representing four numbers. So here is the number of points. Here is the load details. So four number of this light into 9 watts plus two number of another type of light into 14 watts plus one number of this light into 18 watts and you continue in the same way until you reach to this number so if you multiply each item here with here here with this with this and you add them each point against its corresponding watt you will reach to this figure and the same goes for here one slash one slash one slash one one number of this certain number of light certain type of light into 8 watts plus 2 into another type of light into 18 watts etc you will get this number the same goes for all the other types so we go on to another example in the power section this is 1 and 1 if you see here this is 13 amp socket outlet single and this is a twin a twin socket is basically two numbers of single sockets so it's an equivalent of two number uh, of single sockets so I would put 200 watts for the single socket this is as per the DIO standard and for a twin socket since it represents two sockets I would put 400 watts so for this circuit R2 I have a single socket plus a double socket so what would be the load here again in the same concept which we have followed up 200 slash 400 so 1 into 200 plus 1 into 400 equals 600 this will be under the R load here so this will be uh, used to estimate and calculate the final load for connected to this panel and this in the same way you would continue for all the other circuits FCUs usually will have one connected one circuit feeding one unit FCUs we are assuming in this case 400 watts in case we have the actual load at, at, at later stages of the project we would put the uh, actual load for the FCU 300 watts 250 watts depending on the FCU size so and finally here this is as I said now actually I almost explained it this is the watt per unit so here I put the number of units or the number of points and here in this column I put the watt per unit representing each unit load in watts and finally here I multiply each unit by its corresponding load in watts to reach for this figure R Y and B so in the, in this case I have an R circuit like my the result of my calculation will be under the R phase in the next one, I have a Y phase here, 
the result of my calculation will be in the y phase then i have a b this is b1 circuit i would put the result of my calculation here then again i'm going for r2 y2 b2 i will follow the same sequence like that like that like that so finally all the r's r1 r2 r3 r4 etc would have all their loads listed here and all the y's will have their loads listed here and all the b on the blue color will have their loads listed here and this will give me the finally i would add them each phase each corresponding phase load i will, will be added here to give the final actual total load connected to this whole panel so in this case i have a 3.77 after you add all these 3.18 after all these have been added 3.47 as per the dewa standards these loads i should have a balanced phase distribution overall in the full project so if i have a final db uh, it would start from the final db i must ensure that my loads are balanced i will tell you that usually you want to make sure that your loads are balanced from 10 to 15 percent there should be uh, you would take uh, you, it's not a fix there is no actually fixed figure but you would ensure that your loads are balanced up to 15 watts 15 percent let's say sometimes more sometimes less so let's say these are balanced loads and here you have the final load connected to this panel so i'm adding r plus y plus b this is the final load this load will be reflected in the upstream panel in the smdb upstream smdb and finally will be represented in the mdb so if i ensure that i have a load balance in the uh, db it will make my life much easier when i come to adding all the total loads the complete project loads in the smdb level in the mdb level we will come to this in later stages so this has been the load schedule demystified hopefully this has cleared a lot of the misconceptions and has uh, made uh, the uh, load schedule clear for everyone uh, finally now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you just an overview to help you understand practically from the practical point of uh, sense of the items how to uh, uh, how does this load schedule reflect in real life or how does it relate with the uh, actual panel uh, uh, that will be manufactured according to this table as you can see here this is a sketch uh, showing the uh, actual connection the wiring how it will be done uh, which of course will be based on the load schedule so i'm just going to brief it quickly here what you have is the uh, incomer that is passing through the electrical meter this is usually located not usually always located in the electrical room this is the kwh meter then this meter will give here we are here up to here now we started with the with our db this all consider all this is our db so my three phase is coming here with the neutral so i have a three pole this is not an mccb this is an isolator or you can call it an auto mccb which is the actually an analogy for the isolator it's not a breaker it's an isolator for the incomer of the dbs db incomer should be isolator so i have a isolator three pole then as we said i will go back to the here this is the isolator if you remember this 32 amp isolator this is the isolator it's the first gate to the db next thing as we said these are the elcbs and i have here one two three as an example these are the elcbs so the uh, isolator is giving feeding downstream the elcb here this is an example actually of a single phase db where you have the phase coming to the elcb and the neutral coming to the elcb it's not a three phase db uh, so but it's the same concept so this isolator is feeding the downstream elcbs here one two three the earth leakage circuit breakers 
this section so here I have a four section in a and the DB representing this one would have one two three four sections then as we said downstream these breakers these breakers are these ones the MCBs so as you see here isolator feeding the ELCB ELCB connected to all these MCBs and these MCBs giving power to all these downstream circuits the uh, neutral will be connected here then it will be connected to the ELCBs as you can see here and the earth connections will be uh, given to the circuits directly here they will not pass through any breaker I hope this has been of help for you and that you have benefited from this video and uh, that you have understood the majority of the uh, items explained here as I told you I will be giving uh, very detailed lessons in the future related with the overall electrical power design the cal load calculation electrical load uh, preparation the cable sizing the uh, uh, several components of the power distribution system the switch gear and several other items related to electrical uh, design thank you for watching and uh, if you have any comments or any questions please let me know in the comments section and if you are interested in uh, following up my future videos please register uh, like the video and uh, uh, activate the bell uh, sign so that you might be notified of future videos thank you very much